Our family, we are finally here. This is Kunta Kente Island, formerly known as James Island. And this is one of the strongholds of the wicked white European devils, slave traders who stole our African ancestors and shipped them across the Atlantic. Now this is an important story as we are still on the Gambian River. And this island, as we have been told and explained, was six times bigger and it is falling apart to erosion. But what we're doing is making sure that we're documenting our history to the highest level. We're going to get our tour guide to give us an introduction. In, in the honesty family, it's just giving me this chills. Uh, just you know, whenever I go to any African Holocaust site, it you know, you, you just feel the ancestors' energy, and you know, sometimes you feel dizzy and you feel just burnt out. But it's you know, it's a real feeling, and you can hear the screams and the cries from the ancestors. And this is no joke, and we're all gonna have different emotional just feel. But uh, yeah, it's a part of it. Mm -hmm. We as a people must uh, <laughs> learn about our roots and culture and learn from our struggles. And that's why our operation, our company, our business energy, it's called Africa for the Africans. So we have a, we have a local tour guide from Dufree and also security. All right, how's it going, my brother? Oh, fine. Good. Yes, man, yes. Yes, how are you? Excellent, man. Okay, Thank you for escorting us. Okay. Thank you. Where's the M16? <laughs> and the infamous thing that you always see when you go to uh, these African Holocaust sites uh, that were historical forts is cannons. That's white European devils literally fighting each other to control, dominate, and exploit our resources. So we're just putting information together and let you know that what you're dealing with is a real situation so if we must everybody can come closer so that we can able to hear what I am going to say so everyone is highly welcome to the island and it's very important to come and visit or to come and touch this shovel because this was the last soil in the Gambia where our ancestors touched. From here, they were directly transported to America. So a lot of sad events were happening here during the days of the Atlantic slave trades. And millions of, of human being souls are still remain on this island, but the bodies disappeared. So when we come to the history of this island, according to the history, this island was six times bigger as how it is located today. So today the island is washing away by the river. That's why many parts of this island and many of their slave prisons are all taken by the river now. So and the first Europeans to arrive on this island, it was the Portuguese. They arrived here in 1456. And the Portuguese were here 
still one of their famous explorer who was named after Andrew died on this fort and he was buried on this fort. And the name of this fort, it was named after him. They call it St. Andrew's Island. That was the first name of this island. So the second Europeans to start the construction of this fort with slaves, it was the Baltic Germans and the Colombians, people call them Latvians today. The fort was firstly constructed by them around 1651. So by 1659, the fort was taken control by the Netherlands for a couple of one month. And in 1661, the British took over the fort. So when the British took over the fort in 1661, they also came the name of this fort for the second time from St. Andrews Island to St. James Island. So from 6th of February year 2011, the brother of Michael Jackson came here, German Jackson, with the former president, Jame, and they also came the name of this island for the third time today. Now it is from, now it is from St. James to Kunta Kinti Island, because Kunta Kinti was Mandinka slave warrior who was captured in the village of Jufure, and he was transported to San Domingo for a couple of fortnights. After spending fortnight in San Domingo, he was transported on this island for a couple of three weeks, after three weeks, he was sent to Annapolis in Maryland, according to the history. So, but according to the oral history, about 900 slaves were used to be here at a time, waiting for the Middle Passage on board to the New World. But before the arrival of their ships, many slaves were dying here because they give them food and water only once in a day. They don't have enough food, they don't have enough water for slaves. And the amount of slaves that were used to be here, there was nothing like toilet facilities on this island. No burial for slaves on this island. So any slave who become very weak in those days, they were never used to be turn, returning back home. So according to the history, the, on this river Gambia, there are a lot of wild animals that were hanging on the river Gambia in those days. Because why? They gained a lot of food from the hands of the Europeans. So the weak slaves on the island, they feed them with those animals. If they died on the island, they feed them with those animals. And even the slaves that were transported on the island, they never know where they are transporting them. So, and they always feel to go back home. So, but they cannot swim in those days. According to the history, our ancestors were never good in swimming. They don't even know how to swim. Even in those days, you were good to swim, but you will never make this journey because of the wild animals. So, and there, and in those days, I'm from the island to the mainland, is three sea miles, five kilometers. So, a lot of slaves, according to the history also, were causing suicide on the island because they cannot seem to go back home, but they prefer to die on here than transporting them to unknown destinations. So, according to the history also, many slaves will be dying here because of the construction of this, um, this buildings you are seeing. They work here for 24 hours, they never have rest, and they give them food and water only once in a day. So when many slaves at the end of the day, they become very weak, but these Europeans, their supervisors were very crucial. Slaves were not used to be treated like human beings. They said they were animals. This is why all kind of hardness that you know is always used to be laying on human beings. Um, it has been laying on our ancestors on this island, beating and killing, um, feeding them with the animals, transporting them to America. So these canals also you are seeing, these are the original ones that the Europeans were using to protect and to defend the island, because in those days, according to the history, the pirates also, they normally used to come over the island, they tried to fight them to steal their, their goods or to collect their slaves. So, but at the end of the day, they come to realize that they have to make a defensive position both sides of the island so that they can be also um, protected on the island now. So, and the, where the cannon is lying down over there also, that's the grave of the famous Portuguese explorer, Andrew, who um, is buried over there. That's his grave. So, and these are some of the um, ruins of their slave prisons where they were keeping about 30 to 40 slaves. As I told you, there was nothing like toilet facility where they kept them in their prisons. That's where they peace, that's where they do everything. So, and they spent three weeks here before the arrival of the ship. 
many slaves they start carrying diseases inside of their rooms and before the completion of the three weeks they all start dying because of the diseases that they collected from their rooms and also um, these trees also according to the history they are 300 years old trees they were here during the days of the Atlantic slave trade and they are called Baobabs yeah so from us now we are going to see inside of the fort now so questions are also highly welcome okay right okay yeah We'll come back there. We'll come back. Oh, you we'll come back? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just around. Good, huh? Let's take a look. Step by step. This one is the model of the island. This is the artist's impression. You can take a photo. They are, they are showing you um, the model of the island. All right, hold on for a second. The ruins of the slave if you can over start. there. And the four corners that were used as defensives, you can see them, where they put 24 pounder cannons. And also, they have their administrative offices and also their apartments and the water system. But all this, when we get inside, I'm going to explain all this to you, okay? Yeah. Also, according to the history, James Island was used as a collection, um, collection point and also a depart, departing point. Slaves in Gore Island, um, before the arrival of the slave ships on the island, the slaves in Gore Island, the ones that are supposed to be transported to America, were all used to be transported on this island. Oh, really? The one in Georgetown were all used to be transported over this island. And the one on in, um, in San Domingo, the Portuguese trading site in the area, yeah, where all out. used to be here. So this is where the ship will be uh, meeting them, and they will start selecting them, selecting the most strongest ones among their slaves. So the ones that were not selected, where all used to be a, a, um, a food for the animals inside of the river, according to the history. So we are we are going to see inside. You can all follow me. So these uh, are the original you, cannons. Yeah, and can you uh, so long I'm trying to get everybody to Yeah okay. I know we're a little slow. Yeah. We can get proper proper yeah, documentation. Well, how, hey, yeah, like the other one. Very yeah, important you know, historical <coughs> information family. Yeah, so you can see the fort is this in ruins today. Uh, and it is still located in its original structure. So they were using pound oyster cells to make their constructions in those days and they use volcanic rocks and the fire ones they collect them all the way from bristol on the way on, on their way coming back they load these stones inside of the ship so that they can have the balance so when they bring them here they will ask slaves to use them for construction so all the jobs that you are seeing here it was all done by our ancestors right and these are the cannons that they were using, 24 pounder cannons that they were using as defensives to protect the island. So if you come to this other side here. And if you can, if you hold on for a second, uh, uh, that way it's clear to the people listening, why would they have cannons on the island? Yeah, because like in those days, um, they, they would think that the black people, some of them can attack them on the island. But the main reason of be, um, putting these cannons on the island it was the pirates, because the pirates also were criminal in the trades, according to the history, and they were also Europeans. They used to come to the island in those days, they start fighting them, they took their goods from them and their slaves, and pirates will also transport all these goods to America, and they will also start selling them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah. Great, appreciate the explanation. Yeah. And one of the things I've always uh, seen uh, historically is the the position of power of change from one one European devil to the next one. Yeah. So we all some people that uh, they're fighting each other to maintain capture, ca maintain maintain dominance over us. But uh, it's it shows how, how strong the trade was because if you have all of Europe just fighting for these different uh, places, because we've been to other places like you know like Elmina, Cape Coast, Ghana, and as you mentioned, um, you know uh, uh, Senegal, Gory Island, and we see the same thing too. We see just a whole bunch of cannons, cannons everywhere. Yeah. So, and this was one of the biggest rooms on the island. And this was used as European armory, where they keep their guns and their ammunition. Because, oh. and also, they were using our people, our ancestors who were blacksmiths, to make these circles for them. That circles, they used it to put on the neck of our ancestors, hand circles and foot circles. So all those were used to be kept in here. And they are branding irons also, we are used to be made by our black blacksmiths. They condition them because if you if you don't make that in those days, they can easily kill you and throw you in the river, and another smith have to come. So in 1725, according to the history, there was a gunpowder explosion in this room. So during that explosion, 11 of British soldiers were here, and they all died in this room. Beautiful. That was caused by the explosion. Beautiful. Of powder. Beautiful. That's nice. why today you can see some of the parts of the building. It is in ruins that was caused by an explosion of the powder. Mm. And some of the parts are falling down because of the heavy winds and heavy rainfalls. So from here, you can see the oven. The food supply of the island comes from San Domingo, where they grown vegetables for slaves. So but the, for, for the trading companies themselves, this is where they have their oven, where they make their own proper food for themselves. But they never make proper food for slaves. So if you come to the other side here, you will see the water cisterns. These two, two rooms were used as water cisterns, where they keep water for slaves. So in those days, according to the history, they don't collect fresh water for slaves from the mainland. So like every rainy season, they collect rain water to drop in these two rooms. And water can stay here for three months, water can stay there for three months. But before one, uh, one, two weeks time, the water is changing, it's getting very stagnant. Mm -hmm. So whenever okay. slaves want to drink, they have to come and drink that bad water. So ah. before we say one week time, many slaves will be dying here because of the diseases that they get from the water, which was diarrhea and dysentery. So this is the way our ancestors were used to be treated on the island. Okay? And from there, we are coming to see the underground prison where Kunta Kinte was kept for a couple of two weeks, and after two weeks, he was transported to America. Let me try to get in here. This is where he was kept. Yeah. And this family is where he was uh, kept. Our family, take your time, give him a few seconds. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's coming. Just watch your step, it probably gets a little shaky. This is it. This is where they keep this mess. Yeah. This, this is the underground, the underground prison of the island, of Kunta Kinti Island. So, as you can see, um, Kunta Kinti, according to the history, was the first person to be kept in this room. So, during his time here, you see this is a metal, uh -huh. they, they take it and it was having a cough. Neck, hand and foot. Because why they did this to Kunta, Kunta Kinde was very powerful and he was very strong enough. He was very aggressive. He always tried to fight. Either you are a slave or you are a white man because he was very angry. So here was the place where they make him to become very weak. So he was here for three weeks. Then after three weeks, he was very weak because they give him food and water only uh, once in a day. The food it was not even enough. The water was not even enough. So after one week, he was transported to Annapolis in Maryland. So when Kunta Kinte was transported to America, according to the history, they kept about 40 strong men in this small room. 
So these 40 strong men, when they were here, they cannot go out because they locked the door. So the more the sun is getting hot, is the more the room is getting hot and hotter. So that's the only place where they can get a small ventilation. So, but he, this place also, when they want to keep alive, when they want to keep them alive, by giving them a small food or water, they passed it through here. So slaves were causing a different, um, the survival of defeated that was happening here. Slaves were fighting each other. Only the strong ones, according to the history, will survive. So the weak ones, when they stay here, before the three weeks, they all die because they don't have food to eat, they don't have water to drink. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. So we're now going to see the branding ion center now. Where are they branding with what ions? Family, can you imagine it's 40 stolen Africans? We could barely fit 10 people here. We was here for less than a minute and we could barely breathe. Yeah, crazy. So that other side was used as the back side of the island. During the slavery days, this part was the front side of the island. Okay, that's why you can see the gate. The, um, the main gate on over this side. So you mind your steps. Slowly walking. Mind your steps. So um, we have the old landing place here where all the slave ships were anchoring when they arrived over on the island. They all anchored here. That's where we have the old landing place. Yeah. So if you want to take, take the photo of the old landing place, you can come and take the photo of the old landing place. Now guys, now you're more in the sun. So all the big ships, they anchored here. You can come and see the ruins of the harbor, of the bridge. The remaining, okay? So that one is made by the government. This is made by the Europeans. So that's where all the slave ships anchored. So when the ships anchored here, all the slaves in their prisons, as different trading companies where I used to be here, so each of the trading company will bring their slaves and they will start selecting the most strong ones. So the ones that were selected by their companies, before they will took them to the ship, they will take them to the Brandon Ion Center. That's the place where you can see the circle stone. So the Brandon Ion Center, that's where they used to burn the fire. So each of the trading company, they have their iron that they put inside of the fire. So, and when it is very red, they start marking, uh, making logos on the chest of their slaves, like animals. So this make easier to them to identify their slaves when they reach with them to America. So this is the Brandon Iron Center. So, and that's the slave yard. Whenever the slaves arrived with um, the families also, we are used to be arrived on the island. So when the families arrived, they separate the families. The baby can be over there, the father can be over there, the mother can be here. So these mothers, they are the ones, these Europeans will keep on raiding. So they rape those ones by making them pregnant. When they were pregnant, they take them to America and they start selling them two in one because of the baby, okay? So from there, we are now going to see their administrative offices. So I'm getting this clear. Pregnant women were still taken. Yeah, and they were sold like sold as two in one. And how long did it take um, for stolen African ancestors to be brought from this island to the Americas? Yeah, sometimes according to the history, it takes them three months. Three months. Yeah, the journey took them three months. The Middle Passage, it took them three months. So the Middle Passage is the most sad part of the trade. Because when the ship arrive here, they put them under the deck of the ship. And inside of that ship also, there is nothing like toilet facilities. And eight, nine hundred people were used to be inside of the ship. So when they left this island before they reached America, it takes them three months. No good food, no good water, no toilet facilities. So, and also, um, this is why many slaves, because of peeing and pissing in the ship, 
This is why many slaves, they, they start carrying diseases in the ship because of the sand. So when they, before the ship will arrive to America, almost half of the ship, they will all die. So, but according to the history also, um, this, uh, uh, the history said that over, over 15 to 20 million Africans were transported to America. And, uh, but according to the archives, all 15, only 15 million arrived to America. Five million, they all died on the voyage, right? Mm -hmm. And the number of people who died in the forest when they are transporting them here, about three miles away from Jufre and Albreda, they used to trade in that miles. So people that were captured, when they are transporting them to here, on that journey also many people died. When we go to the museum, you see how they put circle on part of their body when they are collecting them from three miles away from Jufre and Albreda. So, and also you can see the building also, it was, um, it was two story according to the history. And the top floor was used as a resident for the agent of their trading companies. And the second ones were used as their administrative offices. So this is where when slaves were branded. So they will bring them to the councillor's room where they will start counting their teeth to know how, how many years that they have. So from there, they will start putting heavy circles on part of their body. They connect them to each other and they will take them to the ship. So from the councillor's room, they have the governor's room here also. And the governor also was responsible of all their administration on the island. So and this one here was used as their courtyard. So according to the history, many slaves died here also because of weepings. So those are the ones who don't comply with their administration and they don't, um, they don't want to com um, com comply with their rules. So always those type of slaves, they bring them here, they keep on whipping them till at the end of the day they become hydrated, they fall down and they die. So the, other, the last one there is the long room where all the trading companies mix their enjoyment, lunch, food or any type of things that they want to do. We are all used to be do, they, um, we are all used to be held inside of their uh, dining room. So dining room is where they used to make their enjoyments. And these women, the ones they make pregnant, we are all used to be raped in here, right? They were raped in They raped them here, making them pregnant, transporting them, selling them two in one. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to the last place now. This. Right, they're almost there. <laughs> yeah, so that's the lighthouse. But this was not the origin. The origin light of their um, the origin of their lighthouse was a wooden and it was built in here. It was located in this part here, in this place here. So the wooden one was destroyed and the government put the metal one. So the lighthouse also, like when the ships are coming to collect slaves and night find them on the way. So in those days, the lighthouse, light, lighthouse was having a light bulb on top. So it will direct the, the ships, um, it will show them the location of the island. So when the island was abundant in 1830, the British were here, and they are the only Europeans who stopped the trade. So all the Europeans, they were trying to do it illegal. So this is why um, in the year 1830, the British mount this cannon here to stop all the ships that are trying to, to come to the island and pick slaves and transport them to America. The British don't like that anymore. So they were stopping them by using 24 pounder cannon. So in 1816, they moved to Banjul. They put six battery guns in Banjul. So in 1826, they moved to the other side of the river called Bara, where they built a fort called Fort Blaine. So that Fort Blaine and the six battery guns were built by the British, and they were put at the mouth of the river Gambia, and their purpose is to stop all the illegal slave ships. So, and if you want to see how the island was built in plants, you can go to the panel there. You will see all the ruined slave prisons. All what you don't see over the island, you will find them here. So this is the um, original 
how it was built in plants. Uh, you can see grass houses were all built in that side and they were all used as slave house. You can see them here, they are all eroded. Mm. Yeah, this is how the island was. Yeah. Please be careful. Back from there. Hey, hey, hey. So family, this is where we started from. That's our, our boat right there. And we have given you a nice painful historical uh, view. And this after you're here, it's a lot of emotions, a lot of things going to your body right now, especially when you feel the cries and the ancestors. So as now we are going for the prayers because when when our own people come here before they go, we take them to um under that baobab tree where by they have to make a prayers for their ancestors. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So it's prayers time. Yeah, we can always talk about that. It's all good. Just focus on getting <clears throat> Yeah, once we are once we get back on the ship we can discuss many things. But uh I got the whole crew. So family, this is the historical journey that we've been preparing for. And the island is much smaller, but we have walked around and discussed all of the major points. All right, let's give everybody a minute to join us in prayer and solidarity and meditation and reconnection to the ancestors. While we're waiting for everyone to organize, this is how we got here. <coughs> That's our transport from Denton Bridge, which is uh, the connection from, from Banjul. And we just cruised on down. Come closer together. I don't know if Abdul, if you want to lead us into prayer meditation or. I'm going to pray in silence. Uh, yeah. So we can do like it on our own. We call cool hearts. We just come together. Yeah, if you are Muslim, you pray in your Muslim. If you yeah. are Christian, you pray in your Christian way. Just yeah. pray for you. Yeah. Just to pray. Well, we have the faith and our ancestors. Normally, when the African Americans came here, we all understand that it is hundred. In America, 95% this is where their forefathers come from. This is where they passed through. They encountered a lot of difficulties on this soil. And 
lot of souls also remain on this soil here, but the, dead, the, the bodies disappeared. So those are the ones we're going to pray for. And our life also, so that the ones in America we can come back home and see their roots and we can know where their roots come from. So we can start praying, okay? Yes, family, and in our famous words, never again. You know, how about we do a group picture? Solidarity. Yeah. What you want to do? Vote as a backdrop? That's a good question. Around the cannon, maybe.